I'm like really curious about your beginning. You know, I also wanted to ask you about how you get into Web3, but I feel like, you know, we, we, we need to start over. So you are born to a musician family and, you know, you, you, you were going to go into music, right? And uh, so how, how did it all start? You know, how did you get into tech from, from music and then Web3? Want to hear the whole story? The, the journey really began uh, in the 70s and 80s. So it's been a while. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. You're but, OG. But anyway, so. <laughs> um, so I was born to a family of musicians. Specifically, my mom was a, an opera singer and then she became an opera director afterwards. You know, the path of becoming a musician wasn't really <laughs> my path. I was just doing the sort of beautiful sort of, you know, um, sort of filial thing as, as the obeying child as well. So that was probably <laughs> my beginning experience. So then how, how I got into technology was interesting because I wasn't a particularly good musician in comparison to all the other musical kids. I just did it through really hard work. You know, what, I, what it taught me was raw, hard discipline. <laughs> because in music, when you make a mistake, you can really hear it. And there's no room for error. Really. So that's kind of what I, yeah. what I studied, what, what, what I got out of that. But, you know, in order to help me uh, in particularly in things like composition, I, um, I ended up uh, basically writing software in the 80s on a computer called the Atari ST. The Atari ST was the only computer that had built in MIDI ports. Uh, so we're talking about like, you know, mid 80s type of thing. And, uh, and uh, you know, basically you could say I created sort of a, a, a cheating version of music notation in the sense that instead of using pen and paper to write music, I just used a computer. And then I would edit. It was much easier, and I was able to, you know, um, be very effective. Um, and uh, you know, my, my teachers were not impressed at all. You have to also remember that that was a time when you couldn't even use a calculator in school, right? So that was considered cheating. And this is you know, nowadays. If you don't have a calculator in school, you'd be like, "What's going on?" Right? And all this conversation, by the way, that people are having about ChatGPT and AI in schools—that's exactly the same conversations we used to have with calculators in the '80s. Right. Um, so anyway, I was uh, I was uh, writing this music software, and um, I uploaded it on this pre-internet service called CompuSurf. Now I'm not sure how many people here might remember, but you know, and that was you know, the way you went online back then was through an acoustic coupler. Acoustic coupler was a device that you would basically attach onto a rotary phone, um, sort of like literally on top of it, and then um, you know you'd hear like a fax machine screech, and then you go online, and you know, we would have this something like dial up. Uh, dial up internet yeah like you know you'd have like you know 1200 baud rates i mean baud okay not kilo kilobits right so <laughs> uh, so anyway those were yeah. the days i uploaded the software and um and then people started using it and um, within a certain period of time because what you do is back then there was no paypal so you put your address and you say hey if you like the software send us some send me some money I never really sort of thought anyone would send money. It was just simply bragging rights. It's like, hey, I can, I get to do that because you know I downloaded other people's software and I saw them do that. So I just emulated the practice of others, and nobody cared about privacy. Yeah, it's just here's my home address. It's okay, right? <laughs> you know, um, and um, and then I started getting checks in the mail, and uh, and I didn't have a bank account. Like, I was like, oh, well, that's interesting. Um, and through an evolution of things, because I started to become quite active in these what were effectively bulletin boards. Uh, and people asked me about the software, yeah. and then they thought I had some more additional expertise. Atari basically sort of um, said, "Hey, you know, we like what you built. You want to come in and you know have a uh, have a conversation. We, we have an opportunity." Uh, and they had a one man one man band office, effectively representative office in Vienna. So uh, I popped in, and I was this kid, and they were like, "Who are you? <laughs> you asked me to come here." Uh, and you know, I was I think I was 13 years old or 14 or something like that. I was I was very young. Was this Asian kid, uh, and and uh, they had, you know, at first they were like confused, and then afterwards, I basically got the job, because it was it didn't matter, you know, how old I was or what I looked like, it just mattered that I knew how to do something, and that was really my journey into what I consider like the pre-metaversal experience, 